Hey coin collectors and welcome to DC Coin World International Coin Channel and today we're going to take a look at the 1975 US dime. And so you're saying, well why do you have all these other coins here? All of these coins were made at the Philadelphia Mint in 1975. And that sounds kind of odd, doesn't it? Well, it turns out it's true. Of course, this is the one that we're going to focus on today, this and the other US dimes. This is a Philadelphia Mint dime right here. And you can see it's Philadelphia because it doesn't have a mint mark over here. Or is it? And we're going to actually have to come back to that and talk to you about what happened in 1975 with some no S dimes. But first, let's get these other ones out of the way. We have the Kennedy half. It clearly says 1776 to 1976 on it. Of course, it's President Kennedy, uh, Liberty above him, in God under his chin, we trust behind him, Gilroy Roberts, initials there. Flip it over, it's a copper nickel clad copper and has Independence Hall on the back. United States of America, 200 years of freedom, e pluribus unum. And then right here it says half dollar. And then there's the initials right here, the SGH for the engraver. This coin was made at Philadelphia in 1975, almost assuredly. Almost all of the Kennedy halves were made at the Philadelphia Mint for Philly were made in 1975. They got way ahead of them. How do I know that? Well, they didn't make any 1975 Kennedy halves. They went straight to the 1776-1976 bicentennials and they skipped the half dollar at Philadelphia with the year number 1975 on it. And the same is true for the quarter. No quarters were made with the uh, year 1975 on them. They made the 1975 Philadelphia quarters uh, with this on the front. So the bicentennial quarters from Philly were almost all made in 1975 and some were actually issued in 1975 with the drummer boy or drummer man in the back of the coin. What about that Canadian one? What is that doing there? Well, that's one of my favorite stories and that is Canada, their economy grew so fast in the late 60s and early 70s that they didn't have enough coin production to make all of their own coins. Initially, Canada had had their coins made at the Royal Mint in the United Kingdom, uh, in Great Britain. But in the 60s, they took over their own minting and they couldn't make enough dimes. So until at least 1976, from the mid-60s to 1976, almost all the dimes from Canada were made at the Philadelphia Mint in the United States of America. Kind of funny to be working at the Philadelphia Mint and putting out some Queen Elizabeth II Canadian dimes, but that's essentially what happened. The Canadian dime from 1975 was made at the Philadelphia Mint. What about our own dimes? Well, there we go. 1975 at Philadelphia, they made 587 million of these. And you can see this one's kind of dented down here. Uh, we flip it over, we see that it is kind of dented on the back too. It says United States of America around the top. One dime here, olive, oak, torch, e pluribus unum across the front. This is a clad coin. At Philadelphia, they made 587 million, but they didn't make that many great ones. They made four that have been found so far that rated MS or Mint State 67, and those sell for about $2,250. They also made the coins at the Denver Mint in 1975. And this one's a much better specimen. In fact, when we look at these, one of the things we look at is to see if we can see the full bands on these. This is not, no, it's not as good as I thought. The front's better than the back. But if you have the full bands version from Denver, from 1975, there's only one MS-68 that has that so far. And the estimate is that's worth about $2,000 plus dollars. You can see the 1975 coins didn't get um, great pressings on them. Almost none of them did. And 314 million of these were made in Denver. And then finally, there is the San Francisco Mint coin. I say finally because this is a special circumstance here. The San Francisco Mint coins, almost all of them, had an S on them. Some of them didn't. It's a so-called no S proof coin. A no S proof coin from 1975, so it's a proof coin without an S on it, sold for $300,000 in 2011. 300000 If you could get this coin, but have it a proof coin, it's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
But in general, the San Francisco Mint coins are not worth quite that much. They've found 310 so far of proof 70, which is the highest the grade they can get. And those 310 proof 70 deep cameos are worth about $110 each. Look for the proof set, and you can tell you're never going to get mixed up between the proof set and a regular issue coin in 1975. Especially the deep cameos where Roosevelt just pops right off the coin and you can just see the coloration difference there. If you see anything that looks like that but it doesn't have a mint mark on it then you know that you might have a $300,000 coin. If it looks like this without a mint mark on it you know you have a Philadelphia coin. If it looks like this with a D on it, you know you have a Denver coin. And then finally, if it looks anything like this, you know that it's made in Philadelphia, but it's not a United States coin at all. It's the 1975 Canadian dime, which were minted in Philadelphia until 1976 when Canada opened up the Winnipeg Mint and they were able to increase production of coins. All right, that's all we have today from DC Coin Roll International Coin Channel. We'd love to have you subscribe to our channel and leave any comments you have in the comments section.